chai ya nema simanyi kunywa chai simanyi simanyi chai ya nema aha kadize sobolo kera nenywa juice ebintu bwe bityo na ye chai ya nema aha eche ndugo bate wachikulira ko chiwa chizibu nyo Oh, oh. Mukama aluwo mwana tu ano mwana wa mlodi. Aine ente ya kazala. Kati ente yeri na mata. Mumugamba bawa mata. <laughs> like Ekibade eh? chitano kunywa. Amata. Atari ono. Ah. Anai. Mm. Sema ina komanya. Eh. Oba wetaka ngo osize ne program yago. Mm. Anai. Sente muzikola muli no kuzidia. Mm. Awulambu ense no bumpi nyo. Ogano okuzidia. Eh, nduso alukumi bweruti. Otereka chotereka endala no zidia. Aba zidinze bebanji. Uh -huh. So um, once the clay is extracted, it's placed on the sides or anywhere really that you like. So once it's placed like that, right, you give it a couple hours, but no more than a day, you know, and then they start softening it. Once they start softening it, I'm going to show you how they soften that. Once it's softened, you have to look for some of these um, dry, dry what? dry leaves dry plants and cover it to keep it from from dehydrating you see the sun extracts water from anything it touches you know evaporation and stuff like that so once it evaporates it means they have to redo it again that's the problem we have with this pile we have to hydrate this pile constantly and then keep breaking it apart because it is uh, there is no water. There is not as much water in there anymore. So we have to keep... I hope it rains on it. That would, that would simplify our job at this point, but the rain is not coming. So Now, uh, contrary to what we think, uh, clay bricks, right, don't love water. They only love water at the, make, at the process of making them. Once they start making them, because that's like the other step after that. Once you make them, they place them flat like this, right, on the ground. These things are actually for buying too. At this stage, you need polythens to um, suck, suck, suck clothes, like a, like a suck like this, you know. All these things you must buy. You see, you need these. These are the best for covering at that stage. Every stage has its own things that you need to cover. Like mine, you see mine? I put this first, this, this sock, and then I put this. That way, there is a slow drying process taking place right here. Slow drying, you need slow drying. And actually, once you make these bricks, don't wait too long to cover them. You have to, as soon as the sun comes up, or you realize that the sun is hitting them, you cover immediately. Why? Because the sun is, I mean, the sun can destroy them. It breaks them. How? Let me show you an example. Uh, these are also mine. I don't think I have any broken ones because we covered these quickly. I'm going to show you what this stage is when it comes in. Now, they can break, the sun can break them. So you cover them immediately after making them. So you pile up and say 100, cover. 200, cover, cover. You keep covering. Now, another thing, <laughs> you have to be careful with these, you know, these dry, these dry plants. There are snakes in there, you know. I was carrying and covering these and I was holding a snake unknowingly. And guess what? <laughs> Once I put it down, 
I jumped like a crazy woman. Because the snake came out real on the top around there. It was a red snake. I'd never seen a red snake before. At least not like that one. So I'm lucky. I it didn't get I didn't I didn't get beat. I think the snake was still coiled up. They say when the snake is still coiling up, it rarely bites. And then when it, it it stretches, then I guess it's a it's more alert. I don't know. Maybe it's just a myth, but shit. I survived. <sighs> Might as well believe that. I mean I felt myself holding something soft. But I wasn't sure what I was holding. So I just get I just went on with my my process. And there I was a snake. Very dash snake. It was a bit reddish orange. I don't even know what type of snake that is. So anyway, you have to be careful. You guys have to be careful. You have to have on boots at all times because if if something uh, attacks you from below, remember the snakes are believed to bite um, ankles mostly. So when a snake attacks you from below, half the time it's going to attack your ankles or any any area around there. They don't usually stretch that high to to bite you all the way to your thighs unless it climbs you but yeah unless it's on an elevated surface as well anyway i'm not a snake expert i'm just saying boats help so once your bricks are covered at this stage you give them three to four days if it has not rained once three to four days elapse then you pile them up in fours the order is quite different the way they pile them up see these see them from this side one lays flat another another two come on there and then you put one on the top some people even put up to five depending on how hard your your bricks have gotten you know i suggest you do at least four four is a safe number now when they are like this they won't get spoiled no matter how much rain comes down they won't get spoiled but when the rain finds them flat like that chances are high they will get spoiled they'll get mushed up you know when they're flat like this one one singular the rain will, will destroy them so that's why we elevate them for a start and then you wait a week when they are this level and then you start piling them like this see that but you do a you do a short one first, so you keep adding up more and more, depending on how much strength you have. And then when they they stay on this at uh, this stage, they, they can stay there for as long as you want. You know, at this stage you can use polythens, see, polythens, DPCs, what what, to cover them. It's okay. They are strong now at that stage. They're very strong. They, they, they're not absorbing, they're not, you know, you can even go further and cover them hard like he did, you know, you see that? Because now when you leave them exposed, too exposed like this and the rain is heavy, it means the whole line like this, the whole outside line is spoiled. So you have to take out the inside ones and bundles and then you waste the outside line something that happened to this person here the person who was here you know so you have to make sure that you cover them real well you know not like these these are fresh they look like they just been piled up recently so they are fine see that they're very fine even on the outside and then from there then you go and burn at this stage, they can be there for about a week and a half, two weeks, even just a week, and then you burn them. They're ready. So, these have about two more days to be put in a small pile, you know. Everything has a stage to it, and there are reasons why everything is done, and they're justifiable. Contrary to what we've been doing with the concrete blocks and pavers, clay bricks don't get cured. Even soil bricks, no curing. Once that's done, now to cure is to strengthen the ultimate strength. Now, what you'd substitute for curing in the clay bricks and soil bricks is burning. You expose them to fire, 
that's it they are extremely strong you know that's why you could hit a whole play brick all day and not to be to be a, a bearer of bad news but clay bricks are stronger than any other brick they're stronger than concrete bricks they, they have more they're more resilient you know so yeah like I said it's quite interesting but those are the processes you know everything every stage everything requires money even just to do this this is a job it's a job on its own so at the end of this all of this you know I'll be showing you financially how much I spent how much I incurred to achieve what I achieved you know the more bricks you make the more they cost you you know the more they cost you in firewood and a truck an elf truck of wood you know of wood that burns these bricks is 330,000 shillings at most one elf truck so have you seen those exits you know at the burnings of the when they're about to burn these bricks every exit requires one truck so if you have two exits those are two trucks you see that you see that? that 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 has two exits it means that person required two trucks and not just any wood you know there are certain trees that can burn and certain trees that can't burn you know for example uh mango 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 tree stumps they're good they're very good because they're strong the harder and stronger the tree the longer it takes to burn out that's that's the concept you know so for 20,000 bricks I might have three exits or four which leaves me at a point where I'll need at least 1.5 to simply burn you know all I'm saying and this is a price no matter where you go as long as you're in this country and some places are even cheaper but there are cheaper alternatives you know because 300 is a lot of money 300,000 that's almost what how many dollars is that let me see the dollar is at 39 I believe that's crazy uh, 3, 9, 10, 150, that's too much, 100, that's too much, 80, eh, maybe around 90, maybe not, 85, damn, yeah, so you need about $85 for every exit, you know, of wood, now, the cheaper alternative that I was about to tell you, is um you can go to people now like down here there is families that have old trees that they, you know they've been there for years and years i know most of you have concerns for the environment but shit down here i think we're good i think we're good so someone can sell to you their tree a full grown tree and maybe a hundred and fifty thousand shillings you know, or maybe a hundred thousand shillings. It depends on your bargaining power. So you basically just hire a what? A machine to come and cut it down, break it down for you. You know, you could find that that one tree can actually fill two trucks. You know, if it's big enough. The bigger the tree, the more job it can do. The other advantage to clay bricks, once you burn them, and they don't get fully burnt, that some don't get fully burnt, you can put them aside and burn them again. You know? So that means it's very hard to make losses with this kind of work, as long as you've taken all the steps seriously. You know? So yeah, different plots, everyone is doing their own thing, you know? It's crazy. But yeah, those are the steps. Those are the steps. The rest you see is, is just a process. 
it's a process so once you've identified your place right check out the type of clay if the type of clay is good put uh, look for the owner of the place and then buy from them buy a small plot you know it can be any size but usually it depends on how many bricks you want to make if you're looking to make 10,000 that's what they'll give you if you're looking to make 20,000 that's why you that's what you buy yeah now um, you see this place they're extracting clay right extraction of clay varies when you're extracting clay and you bought a plot make sure that the clay gets extracted all the way down sometimes people will extract just on the top or something and then leave it and then it will get flooded like that so you make sure that all your clay gets done because sometimes uh, how do you know that the clay is done in a, in a hole that's being where the extraction is taking place when you finally get to see some sand and if you don't get to see some sand you can just see you realize that there is no more clay you know they are taught there are layers okay. of soil the ground so, has different um, layers so, so we are extracting again more clay i have a long way to go this entire area is mine so we extract step by step so we started from here you'll be seeing the guys extracting uh, basically there are stages to making clay bricks and i'm gonna break them down for you kind of eh? mm. I don't call it. Tree. <laughs> So basically, you have to buy polythens and then cut them. You know, <laughs> so these and the dry grass they basically protect the bricks from what from water, especially in a rainy season like this. So you cut them up, you don't you can't use the what the DPCs or polythens yet because the, the bricks need to breathe. You know, they need to dry. If the if the DPC, the hot polythens are on them, they can't breathe or basically they can't dry and you need them to dry. So these you put first, I'm gonna show you. You put these first on and then you put the grass. <laughs> Ah, uh ha, -huh. by night. Okay, so you put polythens first and then grass. Crazy. Let me show you. Big difference, you know. When you're doing the concrete blocks, you do, you just get your top lens. That's it. You know, that's it. And here, couplings don't walk like that. See? And then you put grass on top of the sacks. Okay. <laughs> so, Hold a on. crazy experience. I just touched a snake. I know it's crazy. It was that screamed like a little bitch. Ooh. 
school, I'm not going next to that thing again. Snake. It was a red snake. I was I touched something soft. You know, I was trying to cover this up, so I didn't know what it was. And it was a snake. It was a damn snake. They said they saw it go. I don't know if they did. I don't know if it's that. I'm worried. I'm overthinking now. <laughs> Oh my god, a snake. I saw a fucking touch the snake. Red one. I never seen one like that before. It looked like the grass itself. It's like camouflage or some shit. Ooh, child. Did it bite? I don't, they say it didn't bite me. I guess it wasn't threatened by me or some shit. Thing came out of there like crazy. But I know it's still in here somewhere. I ain't trusting this place. <sighs> Oh my goodness, chills, chills, <laughs> I'm not touching this thing again, no, no I'm not, oh, Kenya, catfish, we have catfish here, free of charge, ah, crazy, it's a big one though. Bukenya, ogena fumbako. Oh my god. Damn. Chicho chicken, that no. Bukenya chicken, da. And I think this is still young. Yes, we're having fish today. Recording. Oh, they're recording, eh? Mm. Right. No, no. Mm. Those kanga was in the flat. The Ziriki was. At his own right away, not sat. All of that has sat sat for running. All of that has sat for running. All of that has sat for running. All of that has sat for running. We Okay, Mm. 
Na yetu geze kwa jo cha tulare. Mbweba. Mbweba. Kichinza kwa afekti inga chuma, mbweba ya manjira hivi geze mbweba niti. E chuma chuma chocha mkono mkono nga ulaba kachiva kama. Kwa teka mu? No jamu. No teka mu no jamu. Mbweba. Ndiyamachidde kubanga this is a little bit of taking a time. The vamp and Vumuku. What do you not do? Ah, ha, bye now. my current experiences. <laughs> I do what I can, I pay for what I can't do. You know, even things I can do, sometimes I pray to do them because I don't want to break my back. Uh, it's crazy, you know. Some of us have grown up in environments where we can do pretty much anything. We are very adaptable. And now that I'm a grown-up, I think that's one of the best skills you can have in life, to be adaptable. You know, no matter what comes your way you can handle no matter where you go you can handle and that's a unique set of skills it's quite unique you know being able to handle and do so, anything and a new habit of you. mine for every video i'll be throwing in what you would refer to as a bonus video so my new compound has a bunch of fruits um this in particular is what I'm interested in eating today. I'm gonna harvest one one of these. It's a pomegranate. Crazy fruit. We have little babies. Now let's see. We're gonna harvest that one up there. That one. Pomegranate. Let's get it. Kazi jango kwa chile wano, ngomulido chagune kwa wako. Tovao. Sorry. Surprisingly ready. She's trying. Hi, Tasha. Hello, baby. Trying to eat the pomegranate. Nice. So yeah, you eat the you eat this, the shred off. Yeah, it's quite nice. 